when I started WeGovi, the the thing about it was that it turned off that hunger. It was like it was immediate, where it was like the I I could eat small portions and I was satisfied. I felt full, and it was it was like this glorious relief. Jean, how did you find carnivore? Hi, Dave. Um, thanks for asking me that question. I'll, and I'll get to the answer in just a minute. I first want to say uh, hi to my support group where the uh, my Ben Malik Life Warriors. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and um, and also before I jump in, I just want to tell you, Dave, thank you very much for this platform and building it and working so hard to to have this place where people can come and tell their story so that other people can hear it and find hope and belief in, in this eating. So how did I find out about, um, um, well, keto carnivore multivore uh, is through my coach, Brett. You've had Brett on. Um, he's, to me, he's like a miracle. So that's that's how I found out about it. I had never heard about any of it before. I didn't know that um, really any of it. I, I sought and sought and sought for to get better. And I kept looking at medicines and medications. And all the time it was uh, fixable through what I was eating. I'm, I'm like 70 years old. So I figure I kind of went off the track when I was about in third grade. So I've got over 60 years of um, really poor eating and probably that long of insulin resistance that I've done to my body that uh, Brett's coaching me through healing. And also people that you have on your platform and other platforms that teach all about this. So, um, I, I also want to explain to everybody that um, my most vivid memories for talking and sharing are um, uh, crying, shaky voice, and um, cold, dead fish, clammy hands. So I, I don't know if everybody knows this, but I'm in Brett's studio right now because he's supporting me through this so that I'm not crying through the entire thing or just hiding under the table. And um, my hope is, you know, and you know this from talking with Brett, he's an incredible presenter and in giving information. And I'm like the opposite that uh, I have that inside me where I, I hope to pay it forward, but I don't have the abilities to do it and this is my hope to pay it forward sure uh, nice um so from the third grade what what are some of the the health issues that developed for you well uh, i started out life with real bad allergies and uh lung conditions and like double pneumonia before i was in school i had really severe allergies where they weren't really diagnosed until after the the double pneumonia, and um, it turns out there were things like you know back then we had couches that were stuffed with horse hair. Guess guess who's allergic to horse hair? <laughs> so um, you know they'd have me on the couch so that they could have me near them so they could hear if I was having in trouble with my breathing. It, so those kind of things, but. You know, when I first started to um, become addicted to sugar was we, we were living in a place next to a gas station. And, you know, you, at that time you had a full size candy bar for like a, a nickel. And I would go and get, you know, five, six of those. I'd go hide out in the garage and I'd eat every single one of them in one sitting. That's that's honestly kind of where I think I went wrong. And by the time I was like in junior high, I was hiding food in my room, uh, like cans of, of uh, cherry pie filling. I could eat the whole can and, you know, bottles of soda in my closet and things like that. So I think I really messed up my metabolism pretty early. 
by the time I was an adult and, and married and with uh, and, and started to have kids, I worked really hard to stay at an appropriate weight for my height. And I, I did pretty good, but it was always a wrestling match. And it was the older I got, the more starvation set in, you know, where if I was trying to lose weight, it was, um, I was like starving. And it, it was the people that had lived with me, it was, you know, it was, they might as well have been in a cage with an angry mother bear, you know, protecting its child when I was hungry and I was hungry all the time. So by the time I, uh, like maybe 10 or 11 years ago, um, my mom died and it was very hard on me. And uh, so I really began to eat, I think maybe even to eat to, I'm not positive about that, but I kind of think so. And uh, I was doing a pretty good job of it too. I got to where I couldn't really move anymore. I was in horrendous pain. I didn't have any energy left. And um, well, that pretty well sums it up. Uh, I I can relate to the hiding food as, you know, at, at that age, you know, around your early teens. I was doing that as well. I remember getting up early in the morning and uh, when no one else was awake and just turning the TV on and just constant trips to the kitchen quietly, taking cookies out of the out of the packet and just like eating cookies and think, okay, no one's coming. I'm going to go back and get another one and get another one. And thinking that people wouldn't notice it when, uh, you know, they woke up and they went to the cupboard and there was half a pack of cookies left or something, you know? I don't know. So I, I can relate. Um, so through all this, I mean, like, so you're at the point where you, you're struggling to move without pain. And a, um, a that I thought of in my head to explain it was like, like if you're you're working on a floor and you're either painting a floor or you're putting down adhesive to put something down on the floor and you haven't ever done it before and now you've worked your way into a corner and there is absolutely no way for you to get out. And that's where I got myself. And when I talk about um, like paying it forward, I my hope is that people that, you know, may have experienced some of those same things and have given up and don't think they even have enough strength left to change, um, you know, find out there is there is such a simple way to to recover and restore health. So when you when you had kind of painted yourself into that corner, um, I mean, how were you feeling at that point? Practically dead. I still had enough energy left that I could uh, get up and go to work. I retired within a few years of that, but then still worked part time. And it, it felt as though work was like a lifeline that if I didn't have work, I would never get out of bed. Um, and so I guess the next part of your story, you just continued on that way. And then you met Brett? Well, actually, I, I continued on that way. And then sometime or another, I think online, Googling around, I came across this, um, it, it was a it, WeGovi. And at that time, it hadn't been approved for weight loss yet. It was, it was still just for whatever they used it for, diabetes. And uh, so even before it was uh, approved for weight loss, I was so sick that even my doctor saw that I was pre-diabetic. And on that basis, they were able to get me onto Wegovy. And I started to lose weight with Wegovy. But the, the big thing about Wegovy was that um, for the first time in as long as I could remember that that awful lashing of constant lashing of hunger, like screaming at me that I had to eat more. And when I say I had to eat more, it was like, I would be in my room alone at night, I'd be um, eating things that I had hidden there, and none of it was nutritious. I would be eating so much that my stomach was full, I felt sick to my stomach. And I still 
needed to eat more. It was even where I was literally sick to my stomach, but still wanted to eat more. And what I, I didn't realize was that nutritionally, I was malnourished. And so when I started Wegovi, the, the thing about it was that it turned off that hunger. It was like, it was um, immediate where it was like the, uh, I, I could eat small portions and I was satisfied. I felt full and it was, it was like this glorious relief. And I was going over some of my notes from, cause I, you know, tracked everything. <laughs> and I was going over some of my notes and about five and a half months in, I plateaued for a long period of time where then metformin got added in. And then I lost some more weight and then plateaued, I think for like 16 weeks. And then I went off of both the metformin and the Wegovy and went on to the Manjaro. And so switching it, they, they moved me to a smaller dose of Manjaro. So I was actually gaining weight for a little while there. And then I was just maintaining the weight that I had gained. And then I started to lose weight again on that and then had hit a plateau. And then in uh, January of this year, my insurance quit covering it. So I was off of it completely. Now, when I started it, I was asking my doctor, I was like, so, you know, but when, by the time I get to the, you know, the weight that I should be for my height, you know, am I going to be able to go off of this? Am, am I going to have to stay on it the rest of my life? Do we just taper off of it? And nobody knew, you know, no, nobody knew because it hadn't been used that way. So as I was, you know, when insurance was pulled and I was just like off of it, I found out, yeah, you, I would have been on it all of my life and it loses effectiveness. So I'm not even, and I was at the maximum dosage. So I'm not even sure if staying on the rest of my life was going to do me a lot of good. And another important thing that I'd like to bring up that I know now because of breath and because of watching your platform and other platforms is that it we go be there's a lot of things about it that people consider not safe or healthy and that the country that the company uh is in that makes we go be or over in europe i think it's the companies over in europe that they can't even sell it over there it's illegal so these things I didn't know. I, I I didn't know the different things that it could do to you where it could, uh, yeah, muscle loss. And, um, oh, yes. And this one's kind of big with me because my GI tract is still not functioning great. It's doing better, but it's I'm propping it up with all sorts of stuff to get it to run in a regular way because it really does seem like it's kind of paralyzed. So they put you on Wegovy because of pre-diabetes. And actually it was because I was asking for it because I was morbidly obese. Right. Okay. So they, they put you on Wegovy because of the the pre-diabetes and also because of being obese. And then later they added metformin. It feels like a little bit of an upsell to me, like a McDonald's upsell. It's like, would you like would you like some metformin with your order? I hadn't thought of it along those lines, but what was the reason they added metformin in? Because the we Govi, I was at the highest dose and had stalled for over 10 weeks and it didn't look like it was going to not stall anymore. And it was to see if it could jumpstart you. Yes. Jump, so it, basically, the, doc the doctor's plan is just keep adding to the just keep adding drugs in until you know you get to the point where nothing's working yeah that's where i got to that's right so the the day i met brad i was i uh, had been shopping i had this um i had oh and because my digestive tract wasn't working real well i was i was using something where you might add it to water and then mix it up and drink oh miralax things miralax well, I didn't want to just mix it with water. So uh, uh, Walmart had a great big sale going or they had lowered the price on um, Gatorade. I had, <laughs> when Brett met me, I had uh, four eight packs of Gatorade, um, some ice cream bars and some frozen dinners. And 
he's just kind of looking at this stuff and he says, just really casually and gently, he's like, he says, you know, that Gatorade's, you know, not just the best thing for you. And so then I started to explain to him, it's like, yeah, I don't normally drink this stuff. And it's like, I know it's not good for me. And then I explained why I was taking it about the Wegovi. And so he's telling me about different things. And the thing that um, just slammed me in the face was, he says, well, you know, with Wegovi, the, the thing that takes that appetite away like that is this uh, GLP-1. And he says, and did you know that our bodies can can and will make all the GLP-1 we need? And it was like, from that instant on, it was like, I like zoomed in on what he was saying. And within, within a few days, he took me uh, shopping at Costco to teach me how to shop and what to shop for. And then like the next week he, um, I think that was like on a Thursday. So like the next Wednesday or something, all these like, well, how's it going with, you know, the, the new food and everything. And I was like, well, I haven't actually started it yet because <laughs> I had so much food in the house that I wanted to use up. And Brett doesn't know this. I've never said this to Brett. So he's not listening to me right next to me, but uh, it was also kind of an excuse because I was still eating in my room at night. And um, so he said, well, you know, you don't, you don't want to be, you know, penny wise and pound foolish or something like that. And, you know, don't, don't worry about jumping in and don't worry about that food. And so actually the next day I started, if he, I, and I, and I've been on it ever since. Oh yeah. And that was mid May. May. Wow. And what, what has changed for you in that time? And, and <laughs> what, what, what was it? At what point did you realize I've got to, I've got to keep eating this way? Well, I, it was about five weeks into it, and the and the pain that would um, that would be in my hips and my legs and my back that was so bad that you know sometimes I could only move a short, very short, like across a room, and I'd be like panting in pain, was gone in about five weeks. And and I don't use like ibuprofen or over the counter things because. Uh, because <laughs> those medicines I know are bad for you. But um, that was that was one of the first changes. Um, the my hunger has been in control. There will be times when I do feel hungry, but it isn't the you can't escape it or get away from it no matter where you go and it'll never leave you alone. It's like it's at appropriate times when I get hungry and then I eat and then I'm not hungry. So that's, that's wonderful and glorious. Um, my thinking is much more clear. Um, in my part-time job, I'm, I'm typing and I, my typing speed has gone up and my accuracy has gone up for a period of time. Um, and I don't, I don't know, maybe a year or two or more. Uh, it was getting worse and worse with, I was losing, you know how when you drive someplace and in your head, you're thinking before, before you start out, well, I'll, I'll turn here, I'll go this way, I'll go that way. I, I couldn't see those maps clearly in my head anymore. And I can again now. It's, 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 it's fixing so many things. So, you know, Brett spent years researching all of this and diving down into everything. And, and then he wrote a, a guide, I think 62 page, a 62 page guide. And so he sent that to me. He sent me, you know, um, YouTubes from, from you. He sent me YouTubes from others. He sent me his guide. I couldn't read that guide. I couldn't get past like the first page because it was just a blur. And yeah, the brain fog was that bad. And yeah, uh, well, I mean, that's amazing that those things have changed for you. Like, um, especially like that feeling of I have to eat, I have to eat is gone, right? Yes. And then yeah. what about the GLP-1? Oh, well, and I guess I didn't say this. <laughs> um, some time ago, I went off the GLP-1, uh, titrated off. Um, that's just one of the medications that I've come off of since I started. I also am off of an SSI that I was on since I was in my 30s. And also I was on a thyroid medication and I'm, I've titrated off of that too. 
Wow, that that's awesome. So what does your doctor think about all this? Well, she's she's been kind of quiet about it. I'm going to be meeting with her again um, this month. And I uh, Brett had actually helped me craft an email to, you know, his break your doctor's brain and, 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 and the things that he puts out there for people of how, how to talk to your doctor and stuff. So based on what he had taught me, I had crafted this, my chart, you know, how you can my chart your doctor now. So I had my, my chart of my doctor saying, and gee, for before, before we have this meeting, can you please order some, these tests for me? and check for insulin resistance. And, um, uh, oh, and I had, you know, fatty liver. I hoping to find out just how the fatty liver is doing, but kind of thinks it'll be all gone. We'll see. <laughs> wow. That's fantastic. Like, I, I think to be honest, uh, what strikes me the most is that like many people, like basically all of us, you go through life kind of, feeling like, well, there's nothing I can do about this. And then now, now you're finally in control. It's, and, you know, these platforms that are bringing out the truth instead of, you know, the not truth are so important. It, you know, with diet and stuff, I there was like, you know, well, why don't you go see a dietitian? Well, I had seen dietitians before. I, I knew how to eat healthy. It wasn't a matter that I didn't know it. It was a matter that I couldn't possibly do it. And I think about that uh, food pyramid now, and it just makes me angry, really angry. I'm so thankful for all of the work that all of you are doing to, you know, change the landscape of health what are what are other people around you saying about this have you had any feedback i am uh actually a, a pretty private person and i i think that most people would be afraid to ask me why the changes are in me so um there's there's a few people that i've told about it but otherwise i uh, i don't really talk about it a whole lot i uh, started talking about it with a few individuals and uh, because Brett teaches so much, even, even I'm learning some of it <laughs> and, and, and sharing little tiny bits to try to um, awaken that interest because I, uh, I know a lot of people that I believe are in very similar situations to what my health is coming out of. I also want to say, going back to what do people think now? Uh, my uh, even even with not really sharing with people, my daughter has some health issues. She, she's now um, following a lot of picking up more and more all the time of the things that Brett's teaching. And my brother, I have an older brother that's like eight years older than I am. That. Uh, his interest is growing and leaning towards it and um, actually um, carnivore. <laughs> so it actually is influencing others. I just wasn't thinking of those two. That's, that's great. That's a, so actually uh, how, how do you organize your eating day today? Well, I usually even uh, in, I, I started out, that's the only thing that was similar to now to when I was just on Wegovia is at that time, I was like mostly two meals a day, sometimes maybe one. So I'm still mostly two meals a day. Although just the other day I had my first OMAD. <laughs> and um, so let me think, uh, usually two meals a day. And I, uh, Brett's been working with me on my eating window, you know, bringing it in and that's been going real well. And, um, well, <laughs> I, I, uh, I, a lot of times I have, uh, either two cans of tuna salad. That's my first meal or, uh, four and sometimes five egg salad that's my break or first meal. And then second meal can vary. It can be, I steak is my favorite hamburger. Um, uh, usually, usually a meat. 
like usually a beef. And I find more and more that beef has more satiety. I, oh, my brother and I had gone to eat at a restaurant and it was, it was a Friday. It was all you could eat fish. And they, they had like fish and butter. And I was like, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> and um, it's actually the first time where I was like eating significant quali quantities and not really getting that full feeling. So I went home and I had some meat, but um, that I, Tuna doesn't, tuna's not like that. Tuna, I feel full by the time I'm done eating, but that, that somehow that cod just didn't do it. I don't know why. Yeah, definitely. Um, me, you know, a, a nice steak tends to trump everything else, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so what would you, what would you say to people in a similar situation to what you were in? that the answer isn't in medicine or some magic pill, that the answer is honestly in our nutrition and what we're eating and what we're not eating. I was watching a, um, somebody on YouTube before and they were calling it getting rid of the garbage. <laughs> Instead of garbage, it was garbage. That's, it's, it's that simple. It's just that simple. <laughs> That's, I think in some ways that's why it's very hard for people to believe that this is a thing that works because it's too simple. Like humans have this way of overcomplicating everything, you know? You want to get a promotion at work. You want to start a business. You want to um, learn some new skill or whatever. Nothing's easy. You have to go through lots of steps. You have to plan. You have to do lots of things to achieve a goal. So we just, I think we have this kind of problem that we can't just go, well, nutrition should be easy. We have to assume that, or we do assume that it's just everything else is difficult. So this must be difficult too. And we've been fed a whole lot of lies for a long time too. Yeah. Which makes, makes that leap to, it must be complicated so much easier because yeah, we've been fed so much misinformation, right? Yes. And I agree. I don't think that, I think the doctors go into their profession because they do want to help. They want to get people better. And I think they're just as trapped in people's illnesses as I was trapped in mine and that the doctors need to learn it too. And I'm so thankful for the people that have already found this and are working so hard to share it, to get the word out there. Where do things go for you from here? Uh, how, how is it going forward? Do you plan to continue this way? Yes, absolutely. I think that if I wasn't going to continue this way, I'd be back in very debilitating pain and I would be back to depression and I would be back to like zero energy. So one thing, Gina, I hope you, I hope you'll come back and let us know how your next uh, meeting goes with your doctor. Okay. I think that'll be very interesting to very interesting to hear back about the doctor's reaction. And she's she's I I like her a lot. She's really very open minded. I I just from past experience with her, I I don't think she knows anything about this. <laughs> but she she's I th I think she's you know not extremely closed minded. I really did lose a great deal of um, muscle, I think, on Wegovy, especially in my legs. And my legs were always extremely strong. As a as a kid, it's like, you know, think you could ride safely on a bicycle. You didn't have a helmet on. And um, you could, where I lived, you could, I rode all over town. I, all over the countryside. I rode everywhere. I had strong legs and now they need strength building and brett's been working me into strength building with um getting like two pound weights and getting like five pound weights it's going to be a while before i get to the five pound weights <laughs> matter of fact as i carried the box and into the house i was like oh my gosh 
So, um, but it'll be a little while before I hit those. But yes, building strength, uh, that is uh, what Brett has me working on now as the next step. It just opens up opportunity and opens up people's lives again doing this kind of thing right because two years ago would you ever thought that you were going to be doing strength training no yeah it's just opens up so many opportunities and and ways to move forward you know so some of my goals right now are to uh just continue building my strength a few things that I didn't say before is some of the things that I couldn't do before was play with my grandchildren and great grandchildren and um, go out and work in the yard. I, I couldn't even walk out to where the work needed to be done, not to say do anything out there. And the other day I was out there and this won't sound very long to anybody else, but I was like out there maybe 30, 30 minutes to 45 minutes, like wor working, actually working. And then uh, going back to the house, I wouldn't have been able to walk that far before. So just to continue building strength and health. Have a life. Yeah, and have a life. Nice. So, Jean, uh, do you have any way of reaching out to you? Do you have any social media or any way of getting in contact? Not really, no, not not like your other people, but no. hi, everybody. <laughs> no, no worries. Um, so, look, I really, uh, I'm really happy to hear how well you're doing, you. and um, that you know the future is looking brighter for you. That's great. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming on and sharing your story. I really appreciate your time. I deeply appreciate this opportunity. Thank you.